Welcome to Virtualize Everything. Today I'm going to be showing you how I got this beautiful Android environment set up here on this Ubuntu VM. You don't have to do this on a VM here on Proxmox, but it definitely is easier to play with and fun to explore with the ability to make mistakes and easily reinstall. So this is more than just an Android desktop. We're actually able to run apps here and interact with it similar to Android. So you can see we have FDroid installed here so we can go ahead and look at side loading different applications and whatnot into this particular instance of Android and beyond that this is actually a containerized version of Android so we used Waydroid to do this install and here looking at Waydroid's website, you can see that WaveDroid actually uses a custom version of LXC, which we'd be familiar with from Proxmox containers. So LXC is the core underlying software that Proxmox uses for their own containerization. So this is a container that's actually running on, on top of Ubuntu. All right, so let's take a look at how we Get this all set up and running here on Proxmox. If you're doing this on another Ubuntu system, feel free to skip the steps of how I actually set this up on Proxmox and go straight to the WayDroid install. Okay, so here at the Proxmox web interface, we're going to need to create a VM for this process of exploring WayDroid. Now, if you haven't already done so, the first thing you're going to need to do is get a copy of the Ubuntu ISO. So clicking on local and then selecting ISOs, you can see a whole list of ISOs that I already have. And I actually have some Android ISOs here. Let's go ahead and remove them. Now you can also see that I have a version of Ubuntu 23.04 desktop right here. And this is what we'll be using today. But let's go ahead and download another one so that you know how to download it. So at the Ubuntu website we're going to select downloads and we're going to select Ubuntu desktop. Now it gives you the first choice of 22.04 but if you continue down here you can see that we can get the newest version of 23.04. And we can go ahead and select download here and it actually triggers an automatic download. Let's just go ahead and exit that because we don't want it to download on our actual client operating system. We want to download it directly to Proxmox. So right here where it says download now, let's right click on it and copy the link. Now head back to Proxmox, select download from URL, and under URL, let's paste that URL in here and hit query. Notice it shows up with 23.04 desktop. Now back at the Ubuntu page, let's go here to verify your download and click it. Now it gives you a command. We're going to have to pick this command apart a little bit. The first thing we see is SHA sum and it's 256. So over here at Proxmox, we're going to select SHA 256, head back to the Ubuntu page, and everything here, right here, where it gives this long sum readout, we want to go ahead and copy. Now, that's actually our hash, our SHA 256 hash, that we need to match to this particular file. So let's go ahead and paste it right here. And now we can hit download. This will start the download of Ubuntu 23.04 and will return when this download's finished. Okay, so now that we have Ubuntu fully downloaded and we can see that the task is complete, we know our hash finished and everything and we have the exact copy of the software we intended to download. So let's go ahead and close that screen out if you haven't already done so. And you can see 23.04 shows up here. Heading back to our server and selecting our server, we can go ahead and start the process of creating a VM. And we can do that by coming up here and clicking create VM, giving it a name. We really don't need to specify any other resources here. We can hit next. And we're going to select our Ubuntu image of 23.04. Select next. Let's go ahead at this moment, select QEMU guest agent. And we don't don't need a TPM and BIOS can all stay the same. Let's give it at least one, uh, at least two cores. I have four total cores here on this system. Um, so we're going to give it two and I'm going to go ahead and give this four gigs of RAM or somewhere thereabouts. Now we can move on to networking. I'm going to go 
ahead and change my bridge here. Um, in a lot of cases, you're not going to have to do that just because I have multiple different VLANs set up where I operate some of this different software and my Proxmox server has access to all of them. So now I'm gonna hit next. I'm gonna verify that everything looks correct and hit finish one last time. Proxmox at this point is gonna create our VM right down here. And I usually wait until the name that I gave it shows up right there. All right, so now that we have our VM made and our name is shown up, we can go ahead and hit the start button and the console button. And what that's gonna do is bring us up a more monitor-like view. And we're gonna press enter on try or install Ubuntu. So the first thing I wanna mention before we start the installation is notice how one mouse pointer is lagging behind my mouse pointer. That necessarily isn't the VM being slow, but it's just lag in the actual system. No VNC seems to have a little bit more lag than other systems like Spice. So just keep that in mind. That's what you're seeing. Um, we're going to do a pretty basic install of Ubuntu here and just move through it pretty quick. We need just basically a default install of Ubuntu to do the WayDroid install and show you how WayDroid works. So we're just gonna choose English, we're gonna install Ubuntu, we're gonna use the English keyboard here, so we'll hit next again. We don't have Wi-Fi, of course, because we're virtualizing this, so we're gonna hit next. We wanna just do a normal install of Ubuntu stuff. We could do a minimum install if we so choose, but we're gonna uh, normal install. We don't need third-party media formats. We don't need third-party drivers. All of our drivers are gonna be provided to us from QEMU and most of them are baked into or all of them are really baked into Ubuntu by default. So we'll hit next here. We're going to erase the disk and install Ubuntu. So we'll hit next. This is the correct drive, the QEMU drive. I'm fairly close to New York, so we'll use New York. We enter our name, our username, and set a password and press next. We can choose whether we want dark or light. I'm just going to use mine as light and our installation happens. I'll be back with you when we need to do some more configuration. Okay so now the installation's finished and there was no further configuration that we needed to do to actually get Ubuntu installed. We can go ahead and click restart now and Ubuntu is going to ask us to press enter to remove the installation media so we can do that. We can go ahead and log in now that we've booted up Ubuntu with the credentials we set up during the installation. Installation. And the first thing I'm going to do is update this system. So I'm going to hit skip here and get through these screens. Then I'm going to head down here to this show applications button and I'm going to open a terminal and I'm going to enter sudo apt update and I'll string it together with two amper stamps and a sudo apt upgrade and we'll add the dash y at the end, give it our password and I'll be up with you when the updates are finished. So now that we have Ubuntu updated and it's done its final restart so all the updates are applied, we can begin the install installation process of WayDroid. And here on the WayDroid's website, there's a lot of great information for doing the actual install itself on many different operating systems. Some of these operating systems are actually even phoning systems, which I actually find really cool. So scrolling down through here, if we scroll for a while, we'll actually find Ubuntu and Debian deliveratives and the instructions here. We're going to be installing on Lunar, so we need to follow this entire process. So over here at the command line, we're going to start out by sudo apt install, and we'll install Carl and CA certificates. And we'll add that dash Y to the end here so that the answer is yes and it auto installs. So once that's all entered in, you can press enter and give it your system password and the installation will begin. Now we need to reach out using Carl and get the WayDroid certificates or add the WayDroid repo. They have a really nice script for doing this. Um, as always, we won't view this script here today, but it is a good idea to take a look at any 
scripts that you're going to use for installation for safety purposes. So we're going to just enter Carl and then we'll enter the HTTPS colon slash slash repo dot way DRO dot ID and then a pipe delimiter sudo bash and press enter. This will download the script and execute it for you. And the last thing we're going to need to do now that we installed the repo and the script actually updates the repositories for you so you wouldn't have to do that. A lot of times when you install a repository, you got to run a sudo apt update to make sure you update the repositories and add them all into your new cache list. But you don't don't have to do this in this occasion because the script actually does it for you. That's why you get this all packages up to date here at end. So the last thing we're going to need to do is just run a sudo apt install waydroid and add that dash y to the end of it. All right, so with waydroid installed, I'm going to go ahead and remove the directions for installing waydroid from the screen here and show you guys how to actually start waydroid, but there's actually a few more steps we're going to have to take before we can start using it. So let's go ahead and remove the command prompt, click on these nice pretty buttons, and we'll tab over. We can see that we now have Waydroid right here. Let's click on that. And we're going to actually have to download Waydroid itself. And we have a couple of different choices here, either a vanilla or this GAPPS. -G I'm going to choose the vanilla. And it's pre-configured with the system OTA in the vendor OTA so we don't have to do anything here so we'll just press download now this process on my system when I did this demo took upwards of 30 minutes so I'll be back with you here when that process is configured and we'll take a look at Waydroid itself okay so Waydroid is finally done installing and downloading all of its files so we're ready to actually run it for the first time so let's press done now we're gonna go back to our show apps menu and head back to the Waydroid logo. This time when Waydroid loads, you're going to see a change in your desktop. All right. So looks like we got Waydroid all loaded. And although we can explore Waydroid here and check things out by moving our mouse over here to the right, we can find some settings. And let's take a look at the settings in the version here of Android. So if we come down to about phone here, we can see that we're running Android 11. We can hit the circle icon and continue back to our desktop. Now let's go ahead and take a look at how to get applications onto this because as you can see, there's no Google Play Store or anything else. In order to get applications onto this, we're actually going to use something called FDroid. So we can open a web browser and it and enter FDroid and hit download. We can allow it and we're gonna download. By clicking up here on this little icon, we can see that our download is complete. So let's go ahead and click that and it's gonna start the installation. Now, because we're trying to do something called side loading, we're going to need to give it the okay because it can be a security risk. So let's go to settings and we'll check this toggle to allow from other sources. And then we can hit our back button and now we can hit install again and we can hit open. again we can see the status of fdroid updating its repositories right here and the last thing i like to install is something called aurora store aurora store is basically a degoogled version of google play store and it allows you to access everything on google play store we can do that by clicking the search icon here in fdroid going to search and entering the name pops up right here so we can hit click on it press install and again we're going to get that warning about side loading apps we can press settings move the checkbox press back and press install now hitting the circular button we head back you can see fdroid and aurora store have shown up we can also find by hitting our show applications menu that our new google or our new android applications have shown up right here. So if we head over here, we can actually launch Aurora Store. Make sure you read the terms of service before you accept them. I choose anonymous. I don't want to log into Google, so I'm going to choose anonymous. And I found both times I did this that I had to click anonymous twice. And here you go. We're able to search through everything on Google Play Store, download it, and work with it as needed. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Found 
found a way to once again work with Android here on Proxmox and also with your Linux system. So with that, have a good night. And if you liked this content, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to help virtualize everything continue to grow.